Hi everybody, we are going to paint some buffalo. Um, I'm going to switch out this image though. We're going to look at a buffalo face as requested by somebody um, last week. And let's see. So I've got this image I've been lightening up flipping around, trying to get it all ready to be a good model here. There we go. All right. And and here we go. Alright, I'm going to grab that image again. And figured <laughs> even though I'm just getting ready here, um, give people a chance to find the stream and um, find your own drawing, painting, sculpting supplies, whatever it is you'll be using today. Whoa, that got big. All right. And I will be using some oil paints and I'll be starting on the hour. So we've got five more minutes to grab yourself some coffee. Uh, let me know in the chat if you have found the stream and uh, what kind of creative project you will be doing this morning. All right, let's see a little further. All right, and let's see. There we go. All right, there's my setup. And so I've been doing a bunch of plain air painting this last <laughs> while in preparation for a festival I'm going to in um, about a week. Oh, wow. And um, I am so nervous. <laughs> I think it's going to be fantastic, but I'm using my nerves to um, really inspire me to keep working on getting ready for some serious planar painting. And uh, so I was out this morning painting close by so I could come in for this. And then I'll head back out for more plain air afterwards. So let's see. Okay. Okay, so this is looking kind of slow and chunky. Let me know if you can see it well enough. Um. Oh boy, it's looking very slow. Let me see if uh, there's anything I can do to fix that up a little bit. Okay. 
All right, fingers crossed. Let me know if you have found the stream. My internet seems especially slow today. Gosh, internet really is one of those utilities you... Uh, I don't know if you just assume it'll be good when it's... <laughs> when it doesn't work, it's like, oh, that is a real utility I was uh, counting on. Okay. So today I thought we could um, use the creative hour to paint this uh, bison and it's one of the bison that I saw out in the Badlands, Badlands National Park. Um, and so I'll give people another couple minutes to show up and um, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to clean off my palette a little bit. All right. Oof. So I have two different palettes now. And um, since I'm doing um, you know, three quarters of my painting plein air right now. And... Um, and then with some different things happening, both of my palettes have gotten completely dried over. Turn off my sound so you don't have to hear this. Oh, hello! It looks like people are showing up. Please leave a chat in the chat and let me know if you will be um, drawing, painting, just watching, um, sculpting, doing some other creative project. And a bit, couple more minutes uh, before I get started. So grab your supplies, um, anything from a pencil to some paints. And, and also let me know if you can hear me. And I should probably tip. Oh, it's looking kind all of frozen up. Darn it. And <laughs> this is looking very chunky today. Let me see. <coughs> hmm. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't um, stream nicely. Um. Hmm. Oh, thanks for the like. And There is that. And um, oof, I wonder. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, so chat and let me know if you can hear me okay. And um and if this is looking really um <laughs> like like a stuttering video to you. Um oh my goodness. And oh. Okay, so I'm going to jump right in and get started here. So I'm going to use oil paints and um, this is a bison from um, Badlands National Park and I had such a whirlwind trip over there um, to collect source photos for painting from and um, I've done one big painting and a little um, drawing last week with you guys um, and I find that drawing the or painting drawing or painting the same thing a number of times really helps with um, with getting a better sense of how to um draw it and so it's like um, a little bit of investigation you get closer and closer to um being able to draw it and just mixing up a nice dark neutral color with some red yellow and blue and there we go. Thanks so much for the likes. Yay. I appreciate that. And... Hello. I've been going through disproportionately high amount of yellow lately, which is funny because I, I used to always go through a lot of blue, uh, more so than the other colors. And, um, so I just think that's, that's kind of interesting. All right. So, hi, John Marie. Welcome. Can you hear me okay? I'm wondering if I should uh, restart the stream. There. Let's see. Um, it looks like my audio channel's going okay, but let me know either way. Um. <laughs> or um i guess you wouldn't know to let me know if you can't hear me that's funny uh here we go so i'm just gonna get a map in of this guy and sort of a portrait and so I have this dark neutral, red, yellow, and blue. I'm just trying to see where do I want this guy on my canvas. And I, I'm i going to do it pretty much the way I have cropped it here. I know that I don't want it going off the canvas on this side, but I don't want like a huge amount of white space over there. Uh, right over here like that. And okay, and I know some people instead of chatting will comment, so I've been forgetting to look down there. Oh, 
I don't see any. Okay. Hmm. I feel like this might not be streaming correctly. Let's see. Is it even going? Hmm. 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 <laughs> okay. So you might get an echo here in a minute. I'm gonna turn on my sound and see if I can hear. Emery, welcome. Hmm. Okay, I can hear it. Hmm. is so beautiful and um, I think one of the nicest things about um, observational painting is that you really get a sense of you just get to see more and more of what's beautiful about something oh yay uh, okay so Fingers crossed. Whoa. All right. So. Okay, so hopefully this will work a little bit better. Um, comment in the chat and let me know when you find it, the stream. <clears throat> and... Hmm. Okay, is this my life? Okay. Okay, so let me know. Did you find it again? Hopefully it's not as laggy. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it looks like it's still laggy. I think <laughs> we either have to put up with the laggy or, um, oh my gosh. I'm always kind of torn. It's so fun to see people live, but YouTube can be such um, a total stinker. Um, where it works fine for a little while and then just out of the blue laggy. Um, so, <laughs> well, anyways, I hope you can see it well enough to, uh, draw or paint or have a nice creative time and not be too annoyed with, um, the technical issue. And thanks for joining me. And um, yeah, so this is one of the um, buffalo from the same place 
that we um, drew last week. I'm not positive if it's the same buffalo or not. Um, such a whirlwind trip. And um, yeah, really kind of amazing. So I'm just trying to get in the big shapes. This is exactly how I draw, right? Like big shapes first. Try to understand the structure. And then the whole thing is kind of this meditative process of trying to understand more and more what I'm looking at. And, um, And so what I see is this um, animal kind of taking up this space over here. The horns are coming out right about there. And let's see. Trying to get a little greener with how I deal with rags. So this is a bit of a learning process for me, but I've got this old t-shirt that was not doing much for me. Um, and so I'm using that as a, as a rag here. And just gonna look like where's this horn in relationship to the top of the head? What's that curve look like? And if it needs to move later, then it needs to move. And then I'm just gonna kind of map over across the forehead to get them even Steven and use the dirty rag to put on this light coat out here. And then looking, it looks like the tops, this guy's head's pretty straight. Um, like it's not tilted this way or that way. So, um, so the tops of the horns are pretty much along the same horizontal line as far as I can tell. So let's get my best guess in there. I can correct stuff later. And then what else is important here? So there's this eyebrow. Love that. And that relates to this eyebrow over on this side. And then there's this tapering here. I'm just trying to see more and more the nose and so this is still early enough that if I realize something's in way the wrong place I just wipe everything off and start over and um, if you haven't ever wiped everything off and started over it's very um, liberating okay and Just rubbing a little bit of paint in here and <laughs> I just like it when it's at this drippy stage. I, I think that's kind of cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's this cheek back here. How does that relate to the horn, huh? It's a little further up. And... Okay, and then this stuff is just a line for figuring out where stuff is. Pick that up a little bit, and oh, he looks pretty funny right now, huh? Okay. So one of the things I thought was so beautiful about the Badlands was um, the the earth and the animals had kind of similar coloring 
And so like back here, you can see there's this um, kind of purplish, um, reddish earth peeking through and back here too. And then there's all this green grass above that. I'm just breaking up the white here and trying to investigate a little bit more. And let's see, a little bit maybe here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of painting medium um, just to make everything go a little bit faster. I haven't been using any painting medium for my outdoor painting, um, which is kind of funny because for outdoor painting, of course, that's when you really want to go fast. Um, and okay, so if you want a clean color that is different than what you've got on your palette knife and your brush, you get clean your palette knife and brush, right? So that green, I have been staring at this green for a week now, trying to figure out what exactly is that color. And it leans towards the cool, but it's not like this fluorescent cool green. It's subtle, but it's also not brown. And so I'm starting with phthalo blue because it's right there. <laughs> I would have grabbed cerulean or something a little bit more in the lighter teal family if it was on here, but I'm trying to use up the paints on my palette so I can just really clean it off and start fresh. Um, so it's a lot. Let's see, I'm going to hold that up even though I know it's not anywhere close and just see where to go from there. So I love this color, but it's not the right color. I need a lot of it. So if it takes me a while to get there and my pile gets bigger and bigger, that is okie dokie with me. So how do I neutralize it without turning it to brown, right? So I'm going to add a little bit of my magenta color, which, um, in this case, what, what did I use? I think quinacridone magenta, is that right? Actually, I think it's uh, rose matter hue. And that's part of the reason I'm using up all these colors is um, I haven't used this palette in a few days and I don't remember exactly what's on there like in in this particular case everything else is pretty obvious but I have so many different magentas that I've been experimenting with but, okay I'm feeling pretty good about that color now it's time to get some on the canvas and 
looks a little bit grayer than what I want, but I think as a base color, not too bad. And then I can bring out some brighter colors on top. So more, more, more. Okay. So I had phthalo blue, cadmium yellow deep. Of that. White. Mix that in a little at a time. Don't go too far and it's, um, we have to add everything else again. Okay. And then more yellow. And I didn't have my color right on, so I don't. I don't care about getting that close. I just want to get kind of close since I was okay with it. And that way I'll be building up the whole thing together. All right. This cadmium yellow, I've really gone through it fast. And uh, the brand I've been buying paint from, they have um, the large 150 milliliter tubes of all my other colors, but not the cadmium yellow deep. Not, not in the hue, at least. So, okay, there we go. Oh, I'm still kind of thinning this down as an undercoat. Uh, but this time with my um, medium, it's a thin medium. So it's uh, less oily than just straight paint. And okay, I try to correct the, I'm looking at the negative shapes here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, isn't it a pretty bison? I think this is a female. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think this was a female bison. I don't know enough about them to be able to tell from just a portrait. And okay, so that was leaning too much blue, so I'm just adding everything else. So a little more yellow and red and white. And that'll give me a little room to get bluer back there. There we go. And, and the, I like blending this together because it um, gives me more freedom to move my edges. Um, you know, I don't feel like I've um, committed yet to any particular edge, whereas if my edges are really hard, it can kind of feel like you've committed and, and then you just stick with it. Um, I think this dark bit might need to move out a bit. Um, I've got the light paint on my brush though, so I'm gonna just wait and get the rest in here and try to observe as much as possible. So much like drawing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of like what happened here. I had that purple out there and now I've got just more subtle streaks. Okay. I think the nose needs to come out and the beard and Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And let's see. So up here in the source photo, it doesn't look like it's totally purple. It just looks a little bit like purple -er from the photo I'm looking at. So I'm just lightly brushing some of this green right on top. Trying to get that canvas all covered up. And and let's see, this is a little bigger. And let's see, kind of check my angles. And I'm following the layout in this photo so much that I can check the negative spaces and say, that feels like it's a little too, hmm, I don't know. Let's see. Let's keep going. All right. So I'm going to try some corrections out here. That bit's a little darker. And then this, a lot of this is, feels a little bit more left than what I wanted too far to the left. I'm just kind of pushing the paint around a little bit to get it maybe more where I want it. And back here, so the bison's darker parts, um, like up on the forehead and the neck and beard a little bit, have this real cool feeling to me, which, you know, it, I've been so conscious lately of, you know, the camera shifting everything to the cooler, but I feel like they really do have these cool shadows. Um, kind of this almost purpley. Um, So I'm just mixing red, yellow, and blue, and a little less yellow because I, I want that purple equality to come out. All right. Mm -hmm. And thanks so much for the likes, guys. I appreciate that. And oh. I'm going to scroll down again and see if there's any comments in the comment area. Um, so I can't see comment area right now for whatever reason. So if anybody is using a comment to leave um, communication with me and you're watching live, um, if you could put it in the chat instead, then, um, then it'd be easier for me to see it. And... <laughs> It really is. It really is so much like drawing. So are you painting also or are you drawing today or something else? Let me know. And all right, so I'm going to push this out a little bit. And 
Okay, so I'm just looking at the size of the eye area, this kind of area here that goes back to right below the eyeball. Um, let's see, and there's this lighter eyebrow. Maybe that's kind of a detail I can ignore yet. Um, looking at the relationship between that and then this little kind of nose bump. Okay. Let me get the sizes and proportion. So, and if that's not your style and you like to do more um, exaggerated um, types of, of drawing or painting or anything where you're not trying to get the proportions, exactly the way you see that is awesome too there's no wrong in this you know it's like you're exploring the outside world and then you're also exploring um you know inside your head and what you want to say um it, that end is distracting um okay so there's this and, and then there's this, so the, the nose hump comes out and then it goes down and the nose is below it. That's so interesting. And, okay. So I can feel myself getting, um, where I could you totally end up with the beard off the bottom of the page or the canvas. And now I'm deciding. Would I care if that happened? I'm not sure if I would. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would. I'm not going to worry about that. So if I go off the bottom of the canvas, I'll just kind of go off. Um, and like sometimes you feel like you're going big to little and you realize like, oh, maybe not quite so much as usual. <laughs> At least that happens to me. And okay, so there's this light on this fur right here. So I'm just not pushing as hard. Um, I'm kind of letting a little pink go on there, not a ton. And and the green and is mixing in and so it's making this lighter paint and um that is okay i'm just using it where the paint is lighter or where the source material is lighter and so right down here that lower lip how does that relate Okay, so I know I wanted to push those out when, when I was painting the grass and kind of assessing where the buffalo was. I'm going to start a new pile over here that's, um, that doesn't have any of the grass color. I'm lightening it up and... Okay, finally got to the end of that mystery red. And there we go. Permanent alizarin crimson. <laughs> I um I can't remember how long ago it was. Maybe a year ago, maybe six months ago. I think it might have been a whole year ago. I was trying out all of these different um magenta red tip colors, like cool reds to see which one I wanted on my palette. And um, so just last week I pulled out all of the paints and I've been kind of testing them and using them up. And uh, so that's why all these mystery reds. And 
So I've tried out different colors for my yellow category. I've tried out different colors for my sort of cerulean blue kind of uh, cyan category, but not so much for my cadmium red and my ultramarine. I haven't really tested those guys out, so that might happen this year. Okay, so here I've got my darkest dark. I'm gonna use it while I um, while it's still not mixed in with anything else. And so let's see, that's a little too red. Hmm. A touch right there. I'm just looking for where could that color possibly go? Well, thanks for joining and watching. I appreciate it. And uh, that's awesome. And, and so for anybody who is not on my um, social media or newsletter, I have an online exhibition opening today. And um, so that will happen this afternoon. And, um, and I'm really excited. It's my... Um, my whole collection of paintings from different places around South Dakota. And I've been working on this collection for a whole year now. And uh, so, very exciting. And so it's, a, it's an online opening. So I'll be doing some different videos and things as the day progresses and um, and letting the exhibition kind of take over my website. And so if you want to come and see that, um, it will be at jessierashi.com starting um, actually pretty soon after this stream is done. Um, and I'll open up comments so you can um, put a comment on the exhibition page and let me know you were there. Um, and so anyways, it, it, it's kind of a, a neat way to just celebrate a year's worth of work towards one project. And, okay. So I'm just, you can tell as I go, the color changes a little bit. I'm kind of searching for the right colors, but also, um, I am searching on the canvas because then I end up with all of the different colors I've been trying out on the canvas and I think it makes it more interesting, um, than just finding the right color and putting it down, which is what I did for a very long time. Um, you know, I would do all my testing on paper or around the edge of my palette and, um, you know, I would get scratch paper that would otherwise be recycled and do my testing there. And, um, I did that for, for <laughs> several years because I was working so hard on trying to get my, my colors mixed the way I wanted, you know, and, um, and then kind of recently I realized that having some of those colors on my painting actually made me like the paintings more. And so, um, and so now, um, unless I really want a section with, you know, pure color right on top of stained canvas. And I don't want any of this playing to happen, which is pretty rare, but, um, you know, the rest of the time I do my testing now on the canvas and, um, and I just like the results a, a lot, you know, and, now I'm very conscious of like when 
artists in my workshops will um, be frustrated, like if they put down a color and it's not the color they wanted. I'm so conscious of that different mindset of like shifting from being frustrated when it's not right the first time to just feeling like um, that's okay. It's part of the mixing process. And um, yeah, so anyways, for, for me at least, it seems like that shift actually helps to make the <laughs> painting more fun, you know? Because uh, I'm trying to find that relationship between the lighter part of this bison and the um, the shadow part of the bison. And um, the lighter part isn't really that light. Like I'm squinting at it a lot and it's definitely not as light as the grass. Maybe the highlight across the nose is. And that little dot above the eye but definitely not this area here. I think that might need to get a little darker. Um, that's another thing that's, that I've been very conscious of lately is trying to um, limit my value range a lot. And there we go, a little warmer. <laughs> uh, yay thank you so much oh yay uh well thank you so much so jim reese and shady looked at my online exhibition and um i know that means that you are seeing my newsletter anyways i appreciate it it's um so funny like you work along on a project sometimes it's easy to just feel like oh my gosh did I do much did I how far did I get and then and then you put it all together it's like wow I, <laughs> I really did do a lot um I think that's that's one of the really neat things about any kind of show is all of a sudden it's like wow I really I it's productive. I worked really hard here. And it's like I can feel it. I I know uh I know I'm I'm pooped. <laughs> you know. Uh, especially I was still recovering from my trip to the Badlands, you know. But um but like really seeing it together, it's like, oh yeah, I did something there. Uh I don't know if you've if you've had that experience also where you um you know put together a body of work or just go through a journal of like everybody that's been drawing with me for the last couple of years. I bet if you go through your stack of drawings, like that's a lot of drawings. And uh yeah. It's, um, I, I think that's one of the really good reasons to keep work. Even when you feel um, lukewarm about it, you know, seeing it as a whole body of work a lot of times can be really satisfying. So I was tempted to dip into my dark paint I've already mixed, but I'm just trying to make kind of a darker area of my medium base and color and get these values around the eye and the nose under control a little bit. 
And then back here, that is so much more of a terracotta pet. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yay. So, Pat, are you drawing or painting today with us? You do not need to. There is no pressure. I am just a curious person. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so there's this nose. Can you tell I put off the nose? Sometimes I do. It's like, that looks like a challenge. There's space there for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait until I get a little bit more confident and um, I actually heard an artist recently say that whenever they come into the studio and they want to paint they'll start off with something that um, is really easy like kind of sketching in some color on the bottom or you know especially if you're coming back to something just like some area of it that just seems uh like it doesn't take much brain power um and that way you are sort of warmed up it's like stretching before you um, you know, do some sports or something, <laughs> you're like all warmed up uh, when you get to the stuff that is a challenge. And her nose is a big challenge for some reason. So, for me at least. There. And, <laughs> uh, well, thank you. I don't know if you heard the whole thing for a while there. I wasn't quite sure which red I was using, but I used that all up and now I've got um, permanent alizarin crimson out there. I'm using up some of that, um, some of those magentas that I've been testing out over the last, um, well, that I started testing out about a year ago and then kind of set them aside when I found a magenta I really loved, which was the rose matter hue. And um, so right now I'm using up the other ones and seeing if there's anything I can notice about them that I particularly like. You know. Sometimes a paint color, you don't want it on there every day, but then for one particular thing, it's like, hey, wait a minute, I know what paint color would really help out right here. Okay. So, and, and then I've got cadmium yellow, cadmium free <laughs> yellow deep and uh, ultramarine right here. Just a regular ultramarine, it's not, um, you know, sometimes there's different types of ultramarine, but this is just the regular stuff. And, okay, so, that nose is too big, or the bottom, yep, I feel like this part is going down a little too far, so bring that mouth up there might be a little back and forth with uh, my proportions here no oh boy and So I'm just going to take that beard right off the bottom, even though I think I probably kept my proportions so it'd be okay. But um, I know that trying to keep it 
keep everything in proportion so that beard didn't go off the bottom was um, stifling my ability to actually see the proportions. I'm getting too stressed out about that. So take it right down out there and um, yay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and phthalo blue. There we go. So, um, so I'm going to the Red Wings, Red Wing Plain Air Festival in one week um, in Red Wing, Minnesota. And I juried in as one of the um, competition class artists. And, um, and so I will be leaving. Um, so I have a workshop tomorrow or tomorrow, uh, next Friday. And then after the workshop, I'm going to hang out and have lunch with my son because this will be a long time to be away. Maybe my husband too, uh, if he gets away for lunch. And then after that, I'll be driving to Red Wing for the um, competition and um, it's uh, an artist, you know, a, a planner artist, uh, said recently, um, it's better if you think of them as festivals, <laughs> much less stressful. So that is exactly what I'm doing. And, um, so in my mind, it is the Red Wing Planner Festival. And, um, so I will be there for eight days painting that beautiful area. Um, and there's also an open class. So anybody who's in that area and um, if you didn't know about the jurying or you didn't want to jury, you can still go and paint um, and be in the open class and, um, and it, it looks like there's some beautiful scenery. I've never been there. I've just seen pictures and it looks gorgeous and I cannot wait to paint some, some water. <laughs> um, I have been wanting so badly to paint some boats lately. I don't know what's why. I think it's just like, we don't happen to have any boats, uh, close enough by that I have been able to paint them. So I've been developing a real hankering for that. And so I, uh, I tend to be fairly disorganized. So I have a list I've been building and I'm just trying to get extra, extra organized about it. So I don't end up there without white paint or <laughs> something like that. Um, and I've been, yeah, definitely checking my list over and over again. Pretty funny. Okay, let's see. And <laughs> hello, cars, welcome. Uh, well, you are welcome to as always pause it at the end if you are painting and um or drawing or sculpting or any other kind of creative endeavor there and um and keep going with the project and at the end i will zoom in more well, she's as zoomed in as you can get. I'll scoot her over just so you can see a little bit more of her. And um, so in case you want to stop at the end and, and keep going. And um, if anybody would like, I'd be happy to upload the photo so you can 
zoom in even more. And so this horn is getting a little wonky. Let's see. Okay, get some of that beautiful red and then fix the values right there since it seems too late and it's it's just not playing as nicely as I'd like. Um, so up here I'm squinting a lot because there's, you know, all this light and dark. And it's so bumpy right here with the fur that it's, um, there's a lot of colors in there together. And I just want to pick what is the big color. And... It really looks like a terracotta kind of color, a little bit of an orangey color. <laughs> oh, yay! <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, it's... Um, it seems like the kind of event where they're just such great hosts to the artists. They have a nocturnal painting event. So, um, and several different painting events so you can paint with different people, um, or with the group of, of artists throughout the week. And, um, yeah, and just, it's like they, they build this really nice community and so I'm excited. It seems like um, everything I've seen so far and heard about plein air events, oh, that's not warm enough at all. So I'm gonna put that down. Hmm. That's interesting. The closer it gets to the green, the warmer it looks, which makes sense. Um, and the horn's kind of in the wrong place, so I'm going to just erase that. And hmm. let's see. Oh. Sorry, the video keeps getting crunchy today. I don't know what it is. I um, Sometimes YouTube just doesn't play very nice. Say thank you, YouTube, for the uh, <laughs> for the opportunity to do this and hosting all this massive amounts of data. But sometimes, sometimes there's just little glitches. Oh well. And um, so. You know, I'm going along, this is the first time it's like, oh, I like those brush marks. I kind of want to leave them there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I'm going to see if I can preserve some of those brush marks. Because the rest of it doesn't really have interesting brush marks yet. No. Yep. So, the horn. Um, I was spending a lot of time painting a buffalo earlier this week, and... It seemed like um, the horn, that color, it's hmm, it's different than the fur color for sure, but it's so subtle. So I'm just building um, a black out of my phthalo blue and my cadmium red. You can see where that goes. It's very green. Try this again, and I'm just kind of experimenting and trying to see if I can get a dark color that feels different than the fur dark color. Um, and so these horns are so interesting to me because these animals are you know, so immense. And 
you know, the, the sweet looking little herbivores, right? Um, until you get too close. <laughs> but um, the horns, it's like they're a horned animal, but it's like they obviously don't need those for self defense because um, they're very small compared to the rest of the animal. They, um, So that was my first try with the horn color. I'm going to change it, but I kind of like it as a, you know, maybe it'll be kind of nice underneath there. Um, yeah. So I got a really interesting question from somebody in my workshop about mud. And, um, and so I wrote back to them and I'll probably do a little recording, um, talking about it, but it's just so interesting. Um, people mean such different things, like talking about mud and a painting can mean, um, you know, the, the brush strokes are all blended together. It can mean the colors weren't what you wanted. It can mean the colors are too similar or, um, you know, I, I think a lot of times it just means, um, that wasn't what I wanted and I can't put my finger on, on what, what is different between what I got and what I wanted. Um, and so, I would love to hear if you guys have feelings about what mud is and um, whether you think that's something that you concern yourself with. Like, do you ever think about mud while you're making art? Or, um, like for, for me, I don't really think about mud. I think about all the things that might be in that same family. Like, um, how do I, how do I like really see what color I want? How do I make that decision? Um, and you know, how are my colors relating to each other the way I want? Like, I think a lot of what I think about is, um, you know, my getting my values and, um, I think a lot of times when people talk about mud, they're talking about their values are off and they're trying to fix it with their colors. And so it's, it's not working and it feels confusing and that's what the mud is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would love to know if you guys have feelings about mud, about whether it's an issue in itself or just a generic word um, that means something's off, you know. But, uh, oh my gosh, it seems like my, um, my stream is really lagging. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah texture that texture that looks very challenging right oh my gosh yeah I'd love to see what you did with that texture um I feel like you could almost like dab stuff on there like grab a sponge or something and Yeah. So that color of the back, it's so interesting. Like it feels so much like a terracotta. I'm just going to stick all the colors in there. I know that's silly, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, John Marie. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining. 
I'm probably going to stick around and keep working on this bison. I know it's 10 o'clock already. 10, 10. So thanks so much for joining and um, happy art making out there in the world. Or art enjoying or both. Yeah. And... To darken up the back a little bit. Got too light, and sometimes I'm squinting to see. Um, and I don't want the edge of the head to coincide completely with the edge of the horn. I think that can be confusing. It's okay if it's close, but not like right on the line. And let's see. Get some darker stuff right up in here. I think one of the major differences between the shadow down here and the shadow up here is it looks like the darker parts are warmer. And so, and some, some more orange in there. Let's see if that is nice. And Cool it back off if that doesn't work. And uh, well, um, thank you all for joining today. Like I said, I am going to stick around, um, but uh, I, I just wanted to say quick. I appreciate your being here, and um, I hope you have an amazing weekend. Okay, so yes. I'm just going to get the base color down here a little bit closer to what I want and so I'm squinting a ton to see is it darker or lighter than the back it's definitely cooler than the back more blue and and then it gets darker up here Hmm. The light source is a little confusing, isn't it? No, maybe not so much. So let's see. Usually, I used to draw a sun right when I started to say, okay, so the shadows are all going to be underneath. You see a little bit of that. Um light on this side, shadow on that side. Okay. Sometimes, yeah, let's see. Sometimes it takes a while to notice. Oh. Kind of working on structure and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, wait a second, there's some light involved here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a good point, Chris. I think um, for me, a lot of times, muddy means... Um, that I just didn't clean something. I was being hasty um, or just didn't notice that my one mix was right next to another and I ended up with the wrong color on my on my brush either because my brush was dirty or um, you know there's a lot of reasons the wrong color can get on your brush like your your palette is getting 
uh, like <laughs> kind of used and everything's too close together or, um, or you could be painting on top of something that's like coming up into your brush and it needs to be wiped down or, um, or just, you know, it looks different on your palette than it looks out there. And yeah. Um, but yeah, the dirty brush thing, I, that makes sense as a, as a muddy kind of like what you think of as muddy. And, okay, so I'm trying to get this structure. It's funny thinking of structure in like wool, <laughs> you know, but there is a structure here. It's just that the edges are kind of, <clears throat> the edges are blended, you know, but the structure is still there. And I think this highlight is misleading. Let me get rid of that. Um, yeah, it's like if the thing you're putting down is not helping people understand the structure, then you don't really need to put it down just because it's there in real life. Okay, there's this darker area right there. Let's see. Huh. How is that color different? That nose, it looks different. Like more yellow? Hmm. It's dark, but also there's something oh, just like a tiny bit different from the fur. And, hmm, hmm. And that nostril is so dark. That's like the darkest thing in this little region. The nostril and the eyeball. Hmm. Okay, so I don't think this is dark enough for a nostril, but it will be a good start. It will help me at least see what's what. And then this part. So I've been working with this very large brush. <laughs> it's kind of huge. Uh, it's a size eight. I don't know it. It's um. Yeah. It's helping me lay in things faster and um not get so tight looking on uh, on paintings, which I know is funny. Like, I don't feel like I was super tight looking, but I'm, I'm trying to get even less so. And All right, I think some structures almost starting to happen. Let's get so this area up here. I'm just gonna get some base color there and better already. That's hilarious. Okay. So I got some squeegees. I am um, <laughs> super stoked. Um, there's 
It's silicon squeegees, and I'm really looking forward to trying them out for painting. Um, so I will be um, sending out some squeegee art <laughs> very soon. And um, yeah, I think it's, you know, it'll be similar to how I use a palette knife. Um, yikes, excuse that. Um, so if that happens and you get all the oil in one uh, area, generally stop squeezing your tube and massage the heck out of it. I wonder if holding the tube upside down so the oil would go to the bottom would help. I may store this one that way because it. I've had I've had it do this before, and pretty soon there won't be any oil left in there. But okay. Uh, And <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I would love to see your painting of actual mud. Um, and some people paint with actual mud also, so you could paint mud with mud. Um, so I'm not sure if you've ever seen soil art, uh, super cool, where you can grind up uh, rocks or minerals and use it with an acrylic um, medium to um, to make your own paints. And um, I have a friend in town who does that. It's so cool. Alrighty, so just looking at some of the structure here of this eyeball and trying to get it in kind of the right place. Um, maybe in that area. And, and so this is a brand I don't normally use I use their painting medium but the paints themselves um I feel like even with all my windows open I, I'm not sure I'm ventilated well enough to use them um so I'm you can tell I'm using up these kind of random paints that I have accumulated um and um, they're very similar colors to the paints I usually use, but um, smidge different. And so all of my darks are with this uh, red, yellow, and blue. And and then I'm just trying to see how is this particular dark. Everything under here is dry, so I'm, I'm just mixing right on top of my my old puddles, and then they'll be easier to scrape off um, after I'm done with this painting. This will be kind of um, softened up by the paint, hopefully. And. All right, so how is that different than what I've got? Right. Let's more. Now that it's massaged, oh, it's still lots of oil. Okay. Yeah. And all right, 
so there's this little shadow um, right under the eye. more lighter stuff and then there's the shadow above the eye can I get that in there I don't think so and over here over there there all right let's see Get this super dark. So, <laughs> yeah, so cool, right? Such a neat idea. Um, Okay, and then there's this little highlight in her eye and it's kind of judge the value. It always looks so bright because it's right next to something so dark and it's super small, but I think it's really similar to actually the fur right out here. Okay. So it feels like I put this too low, but I'm going to step back five or ten feet and see. Is the eyeball too low or is it just because I'm too close to it? Hmm, oh, too low. And right. let's try this again. And what a pretty eye, right? So I'll pull a character. And And there's this eyelid. <laughs> Trowels would be fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be a very fun. Uh, and I have, um, a house painting brush that's you know that that wide and I was think oh my gosh if I didn't use, mind using up all my paint at once it'd be super fun to paint with that but I do mind using up all my paint at once so I have never have but okay And let's see, I'm trying to get back to that fur color. So I can go back and forth a little bit. And that, 
the highlight color, I should say. And let's see, a little bit of lighter stuff right up here, right down there, and let's see. So if this is too light, I'll just bring it back. That's the fun thing about oil paint. It's um, put down something you don't like. It's okay. <laughs> you just take it right back off and try something different. Uh, and all right, let's see. So I don't want to overdo that eyeball highlight to start with. Uh, so I'm going to grab this fur color and let's see. the highlight kind of goes all the way across the top of the eyeball. And it curves around over here. Okay, I don't like that. All by itself out there. I'm gonna bring some dark eyeball color right back in here. Okay, I like that a lot. a little too much there. cool and as long as I've got this extra dark I get some nostril in here and you know I could use black I don't actually have anything against using to black I just um, If I'm working with a pretty limited palette, just putting in a totally different color for one little area, I don't really like. Um, so if I had started off with black being and other things, I'd, I'd be more tempted to use it up there. Um, I know there are artists who, um, who will at the end come in with a little touch of black here and there. And it's pretty amazing. It looks gorgeous, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm never quite as happy with that. I shouldn't say never. <laughs> I'm not usually as happy with that as with just sticking with the palette I started with. Um, It's really interesting how differently some of the artists that I really love feel about um, value, about how dark and light something should be. And um, yeah, and you know, that might actually have something to do with whether they generally paint indoors or outdoors. So it seems like, um, Everybody's got different different ideas about that, but a lot of the plein air painters I follow um, try to limit how dark things get um, 
It's probably because when you're painting outside and you put down a really dark, you bring it inside and it's like a black hole. Um, whereas it seems like people who paint indoor scenes, even when they do it from life, um, maybe more comfortable with getting really dark. That's something I've definitely been uh, struggling with lately uh, with the plein air paintings is how much darker they look inside and how do you compensate for that? And probably a good umbrella would help a lot. But... Alrighty. Yeah, teeny tiny eyes, huh? <laughs> yeah, isn't that interesting? Okay, so there's something weird going on with, um, my highlight is too big, I think. It's making the eyeball look like uh, the shape is hard to understand. It's like either too big or too light. Let me see if I can sort through that. So, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty funny. All right. And, oh, I see. That's, uh, My lower, my little highlight around the bottom. When I got rid of that, the shape got weird. Something still. I think. Let's see. I'm gonna darken up. Highlight on this side. Oh, I feel like that, that helped quite a bit. Okay. All right. So, really happy. I think I'm down to horns and background I'm feeling like that that face it's time for a break a little bit of pink in here might not hurt just on the nose keeping the value the same and Just getting more and more specific. Just like with drawing, it's exactly the same. Uh, ah, she's so pretty. What a pretty animal. Wow, wow, wow. So these guys were all molting and oh my gosh, I had some sympathy for them. It, like especially the one that was you know, itching their back with their foot. It's like that has got to itch like crazy. Oh my goodness. Oof. And the big horns were molting also. They're just this Yeah, it looked like they were halfway halfway to getting their jackets off. Alrighty, I've got this hilarious little brush. And there's all these details on the horn. How much do I want to get? I don't know. Um, 
always get kind of a sense of what's happening first a little bit. Now this is looking very nitpicky here. Just trying to get some structure in, get that horn kind of going the right direction. And yeah, what is that color? That's tricky, huh? It looks a lot yellower. It's very light. <laughs> oh, the eyelashes right there. Oh, those are beautiful. Uh, she's so pretty. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can definitely see why people go up and try to be friendly to these guys. Don't do it. <laughs> Please don't do that. Oh boy. Yeah. And Alrighty. So there's this beautiful shadow here. It's, I don't know, there's something warm about it. It's not that dark. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of slowly work my way to getting closer and closer. And what about the horn out there? I'm squinting like crazy. I feel like it's kind of a similar shadowy feeling to this side, but being out on a light background instead of the dark background makes it feel a little different. Oh my gosh. He really has been trying to tell us about things happening in the world. And so I'm going to cut in the edges with the grass so I don't need to get um, too particular there. I just don't want it to be, I don't want there to be less paint here than what I need. I don't want it to be skinnier than I need, but if it's fatter than what I need, that's fine. And so this one. This teeny tiny brush is kind of hilarious. So I have been, uh, I'm all set up outside painting because I was plein air painting this morning and um, I decided to paint close to home so I could come in here and, and uh, paint with you guys. Um, and so my number two <laughs> paintbrush is out there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And so I think what you just heard Otter barking about was um, a new number two paintbrush so that I can be packed up with some clean brushes for plein air and then also brush for the studio. So, and. All right, so that's the start. And let's bring this fur down. So now the cutting in bit. And that. 
this uh, Embarrassing. Okay. All right, so got some of that stuff. Put that on this side. I just want it to mainly be softer. There's, you know, when I look at the photo, I don't see a hard edge right here. And so you can soften up with a clean brush. If you're the type of person who has that sort of thing around. Um, and just kind of wipe over it. I, I don't want to do that though. I would rather go back and forth with this paint and just get an interesting edge that way. And So, don't mind the hard edge up here. I actually kind of see that in the source material. Should do a little bit more. That sounds very scary. Yeah, it's like you want to have a respectful distance between yourself and them. And it's like, I'm respecting your space. Please stay back. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's like you're there to see them, but not right up close necessarily. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm glad it turned out yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it turned out and you're safe. Okay. So, let me see Alrighty. Um, and let's see. This area is kind of separated by a blueness to it. So I feel like the head kind of sank into the body here when I started bringing the warmth up. I know I didn't want it to all be right along that line. Let's see if there's some other way to designate. Oh my. <laughs> so, yeah. And. Oh, and just kind of softly bring that into the head. And right here. Right there. And those are beautiful eyelashes. Beautiful, beautiful. And let's see. Some of that stuff. And I'm coming back in with the 
grass is outside. And there they are. Thank you. <laughs> And let's see, it's time for some green, yeah? So I'm not going to worry about cleaning my paintbrush too, too much. Because I want to get some of these pinks in back here. And let's see what kind of a Might be there. And get some thicker green so I can get some edges. And I think this uh, she might be done. Okay, so. There's some nice deep greens kind of coming through. And so with a painting, especially on a panel like this, um, I find them much more challenging to put into a um, floating frame, which is the kind of frame where you can see all the edges. And so I, I use traditional frames for paintings um, on flat panels. Um, and those cover up the outside quarter inch. So like this little bit where <clears throat> the beard hits the edge, that will be covered up. Um, And cool, cool, cool. And so this part isn't left out. A little bit of that under there. And So cars, if you are drawing or painting and you are working on that texture, I know you said that sounded interesting or challenging or one of those things. Let me know how that went for you. You can tell I didn't so much deal with texture. I, um, I was just kind of focusing on light and shadow. Mm. Oh, this will take a little back and forth here. And okay. And Alrighty, I 
Let's get some of that light grass now. All right, what color is that? One more time. A lot more yellow, some white, and yep, lots and lots of paint. I go through so much paint. Oh my gosh. Oof, especially in big paintings. Yeah, it can be a little bit <laughs> hard to mix up the huge piles, even still. Like, oh, that's a lot of paint. Oof. Yeah, well, we need it. Yep. Okay. And, you know, if you're working in a series and you mix up a whole bunch of paint and you don't use it, you can save it. And um, so if you haven't saved paint much before, um, I have not done that uh, much. So I, I tend to go through it pretty quickly, so I don't need to do anything extra. But... Um, you can get like a little pill box, try to get one that feels airtight and um, scrape your paint off your palette, like especially if you didn't put any mediums in there, um, anything to make it dry fast. If you can get it into an airtight container, that will help. And if that's not enough, you can also put that airtight container in your freezer. Um, I need that part right now. And... And then that'll help a lot. Okay, so this color is a little bit right up here. Get the rest of that nose. So the nose comes out a little further. I need to come back in with some dark paint. And there we go. A little bit of an in-between paint here. Mixing some of the bison color in with the grass color. Try to dull it down a little bit. And get some of that. Kind of wild edge, but not so uniform. There we go. And then it goes up this way. First it goes that way, then it goes this way. And then there's this pink stuff back here that I'd love to have show through. So I'm going to try to get some of that to still show through. And... That really is pretty. But, but oh, eyelash. Here we go. And so I know that the skew's head is pretty level, so. And. Soften that up a little bit. And as I'm at it, let's fix that nose snitch. It didn't quite come out far enough. And 
soften that up a little bit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Huh. Wow, what a conversation I'm missing here. Wow. What cool stuff you guys have been doing. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Uh, wow that is awesome uh, that is totally awesome good for you oh wow, wow and um so next week i'm gonna well next week uh, i'm gonna change the time um i think i need to sort through and put this on a different day than uh, <laughs> Friday morning. And so you'll see a, an email from me about that. But um, if you're, if you're on the, um, if you get notices about when I'm going live, yeah, figure out what exactly is a good time and your input is appreciated. I'm thinking something like Wednesday, late afternoon something like that um but anyways um next time i am gonna bring paints again so anybody who wants to bring paints or if you'd rather bring pencils all of that stuff or clay or anything i'll just i'll supply some source material It'll be another face, um, as requested, and um, here, it's kind of lightening up as it goes back. And um, so, anyways, there we go. Next time you're welcome to bring paints if you want to do the same thing as me. You're welcome to bring pencils or charcoals or any of that kind of stuff. I'd love to hear about anybody bringing clay or another sculpture type thing. Um, and yeah. And so that's why I've changed the title to Creative Hour. So just do whatever kind of creative endeavor seems right at the moment. Okay. I think this guy is ready for that little break. Walk away and think about whether anything really needs to change. Well, thank you for joining me and you stuck around for <laughs> a long time. Um, I hope you have an amazing weekend. Thanks for the likes. I really appreciate it. Um, for anybody that watches later, your comments are welcome and appreciated. And um, yeah, just have an amazing, amazing weekend. So I will, here we go. Scrunch that up a smidge. Okay, 
So I'm going to bring this close so you can see what I've been up to. And then I'll make the photo big. That's what I've been painting here. Um, and woof. more paint on my hands than usual. <laughs> I'm going to make the photo a little bit. Let's see. Trying to do this without getting paint all over everything. Okay, there she is. Uh, so for anybody who wants to continue on painting her, drawing her, there she is. <laughs> Well, you are so welcome and thank you for being here and see you next week.